Hello my YouTube friends, today I'm going to tell you how to add a guest in OBS for your live streams. It's probably the most asked question I ever get, so let's get to it. If you want more tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you know when we have new content that comes out. The first thing I want to show you how to do is create an overlay for your live guests in OBS. And I'm going to show you how to create the overlay in Pixlr X. Pixlr X is a free image manipulation software that anyone can use right from their browser. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. Once you're into Pixlr X, I just click this create new. I'm going to select 1920 by 1080 because that's what I stream at. And I can name this whatever I want up here in the name section. I click create. Now I'm going to draw a background box. So I select the shape tool. I want it to be a square. I can change the color to anything I want, but I'm going to leave it white. Then I just drag it across the screen. Then I click these three little dots next to the layer. I'm going to rename it background. And there we go. Now I'm going to click this little plus button and I'm going to add an empty layer. I'm going to call this layer boxes. And once again, in my draw tool, I'm going to select the square, but this time I'm going to uncheck fill and I'm going to select outline. I'm going to make this outline red by selecting the color. Now I'm just going to drag that box wherever I want it. I'm going to drag a second box for my guest wherever I want it. And if you mess up the size on the right hand side, you can see I can go back in history, remove that box and just create it until I get the size right. I'm going to move it around and try to make sure everything is centered properly. And now we're all set. I just need to cut out the holes in our background. So I'm going to go to our cut tool. I'm going to select shape and we want a square. I'm going to select remove. I'm going to make sure the background is selected and I'm going to drag my cursor to the inside of these boxes. You can see that this removes all of the white from inside the boxes. Now I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to add new text. I'm going to select the font. Then in the text box, I'm just going to type my name. I'm going to change the color of the text to red. Now I'm going to drag my text down below my box. Then under layers, I'm going to click this little plus box. I'm going to select text to create a text layer. Now I'm going to scroll up and change my text. My guest today is going to be Michael T. Panetta from Tech Examined. He's going to help me out with this tutorial here. I'm going to change that text color once again to red. And then I'm just going to drag that text wherever I want it to be. So now we have a basic overlay set up for our live guests. You can set up as many guests as you want in whatever layout you want. Once you're set, you click save. You want to make sure you have PNG selected so it saves the alpha in there so that you have the background. Name it whatever you want and click download. When you click download, it's going to save your file to whatever the default is for your browser. So you should probably check this out if you don't know where it's saving your file. Now that we have our overlay all set up, let's go into OBS and add everything so we're ready to live stream. I'm going to use this tutorial scene I already have set up. I'm going to click the plus next to sources and I'm going to add image. I'm going to call this image guest overlay and click OK. Now I'm going to click browse and go to the location where I saved my overlay. Then I'm going to click choose. You can see that it's all set up right there. I can just click OK. And there is my overlay. Pretty awesome. Next, I'm going to add myself to the stream. To do this, I'm going to click the little plus underneath sources, and I'm going to go to video capture device. I'm going to name this capture device cam card. Then under devices, I'm going to select my cam link, and I'm going to go to high, which selects the highest resolution that my cam link is available to stream at, which is 1920 by 1080. That is actually the size of my stream. Next, I'm gonna reorder these layers. I'm going to put the overlay over top of my camera. And now I wanna resize my box so I'm all squared in there. You can see that this doesn't really work as well as we would hope. So I'm gonna crop this image just a little bit. I'm gonna crop the left 400 and the right 400. And I'm gonna resize it again and just move it into that box. So now the stream has me in it. I need to add my audio. So I click that little plus in the bottom of sources. Then I'm going to select audio input capture. I'm going to name this cam audio and click OK. Then under device, I'm going to drop that down and select my cam link and click OK. 
Now you can see my cam link audio is listed at the bottom. I can adjust the settings as I see fit. For this example, I'm going to use Skype. You can use any video conferencing device as you're going to see in a moment. Skype just happens to be free and it's pretty high quality video, so it's pretty easy to use. So connect with your guest via Skype and make sure that your connection is working and you can hear him and he can hear you. Chances are you're going to need a pair of headphones in order to do this because you cannot play your guest's audio over your speakers. It will feed back into your microphone and you're going to have a big loop of audio. It's going to be horrible. So make sure you connect a set of headphones to your computer so you're ready to go. And then click the little plus in the bottom left hand corner. Select window capture. I'm going to call this Skype and click OK. Now I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to select the Skype window. Now there might be a couple of them, so you might have to play around and just make sure you get the right one. But once you do, you're all set. You just click OK. Now you're going to resize your Skype window, move it up into the general area that you want your window to be, and then just move it below the overlay. Now you can see we have our guest video added. You can see there's this other floating Skype window, and that's always going to be on top when you're using Skype. It's not a bad thing to have. It just makes it easier for you to know that Skype is actually working. Now to add our guest audio, we're going to have to take a little bit of a detour here. The reason why is because I use a Mac and unlike a PC where you can add multiple audio inputs, a Mac doesn't give you that option. So what we're going to do is a little bit of a workaround. We're going to add a plugin called the I Show You Audio Capture Device. It's pretty simple. I'll leave the link in the description so you can download this little bugger. And you can see that this has different versions depending upon what Mac OS you're using. But you want to download it and right here it actually walks you through exactly how to set it up. So I don't need to do it here. The link is in the description. You're going to need this particular plugin in order to get your OBS to work. Once you have this plugin installed, the next thing we're going to have to do is set it up in our audio sources. And I'll leave a link in the description to this web page as well, which walks you through how to set this up. But essentially what this setup does is it combines multiple audio inputs into one. So if you have multiple guests or something like that, they're all gonna be through one input. Unfortunately, this is really the only way to do it. So this calls it set up an aggregate device. You can see when I set this up on mine, I called it multi output device. But the link in the description to this web page is going to walk you through exactly how to set up your aggregate device that's going to connect all of your audio into one. And you have to do this, unfortunately, on a Mac. On a PC, all you have to do is select your audio source and Skype will be listed. So let's go back into OBS and finish up setting up our guest. The first thing I'm going to do is click the little speaker volume icon up at the top of my Mac. And in the drop down, I'm going to select multiple output device. Now you might have named this anything you want. If you followed the instructions, you might call this an aggregate audio device or something like that. But whatever you named it, you're just going to want to select that so the check mark is next to it. Next, I'm going to click the little plus below sources and I'm going to add audio input capture. I'm going to name this Skype audio and then click OK. Next, under device where it says default, I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to select this I show you audio capture device and click OK. Now when Michael T talks, we can actually see his audio. We can adjust it as we see fit. Now all that's left to do is click go live. Now, especially if you're using Mac, the audio setup can be a little wonky. So I highly recommend that you just test everything before you ever decide to go live. And you can actually add a guest while you're live in studio mode by checking this video out right here if you want. There are a couple of things on a Mac that you need to know. The flicker that you see every once in a while is because we used a windowed source. If you want to avoid getting the flicker on your guest, the easiest way to do it is to have a second monitor. You put Skype on that second monitor, then instead of adding a window, you just add a display. When you do that, you're going to notice the entire display shows up. You can just crop it exactly like we did for my image and then put it anywhere you want and this will avoid any kind of glitching that you might see. One more word of caution as it pertains to the actual stream. When you're live streaming with a guest, you have their video coming into your computer, then your computer has to encode it and send it out again. This is going to require 
require a pretty decent amount of computing power, you also want to make sure that your internet connection can really handle it. Now I've done a lot of live streams with guests on pretty crappy internet connections and it's my experience that if you adjust your bit rate, you can probably find one that will work for you. But just be aware, you should test it to be sure. Not just on a Mac, but on any computer you plan to stream from. If you're just getting started with OBS and you want to know more, you should check this video out right here. It tells you everything you need to know about getting started with OBS. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.